I can't help but worry whether or not we're sleepwalking into a terror attack. Whilst it's a great thing that we haven't had a large-scale attack for a good number of years now, it also makes me a bit nervous. Today it emerged that ISIS republished a video of London with the words coming soon. We should all be very concerned about this. ISIS used to release videos before attacks back in 2017, a year in which it seemed terror attacks happened pretty much every single week. Just a couple of days ago, the Taliban basically put a fatwa on Prince Harry by saying that he should stand trial for war crimes after he announced his kill number. It doesn't matter which way that utter numpty tries to dress it up about how the right-wing media are the ones who put his family at risk. Critics, of course, say that he's put people in danger thanks to his own desire to get something off his chest, i.e. his kill number. So we've got a member of the royal family who can afford to walk around with armed guards detailing his combat background. The Taliban call him out for it. A couple of days later, ISIS issue a video appearing to hint that they're going to attack London soon. And our state broadcaster, the BBC, decides it's a good idea to do a 10-part podcast with Shamima Begum so she can try and rehabilitate her image. Talking of imagery, given that it's a podcast and not a video documentary, it'll be very difficult for us to tell whether or not she's ditched the burqa for the old baseball cap and lipstick again, won't it? We all saw through that, didn't we? Here is a woman who looked at videos of people being beheaded, suicide bombers, etc., and thought, I want some of that. Now, the BBC are giving her the chance to try to convince everyone that she's just a normal girl. I'm still Shamima from the block. At the very least, she's thick as mints, and not someone who should be allowed back into Britain based, frankly, on that alone. But, of course, the BBC podcast series will reignite the debate now about whether or not we can rehabilitate jihadi scumbags. And then people like me will be called racist for not wanting someone who literally joined a depraved terror cult to come back into this country and live off benefits for the rest of her life in a council tax, in a council house even, leeching off the British taxpayer and laughing about what a soft touch we all are. All the while this is going on, we're just willing to let pretty much anybody come here, aren't we, in a dinghy. We're ignoring the fact that this is a massive national security risk. And I look at what happened in Paris today, where a man who, allegedly known to authorities for having a criminal past, we've heard all this before, haven't we, wasn't deported successfully and ended up going on a mad rampage in a busy train station, stabbing six people while, allegedly, shouting about Allah. The danger has never truly gone away. And I think the need for vigilance will always remain high.